Hello everyone. On behalf of the Confederación Internacional des Accordionistes, the CIA, welcome to World Accordion Day 2021. My name is Kevin Frederick and I proudly serve as the CIA Ambassador. Co-hosting our World Accordion Day broadcast, I'm joined by Vice President of the CIA Music Committee and Artistic Director of the show, Grayson Macefield. May 6th marks the anniversary of the filing of the patent of the accordion in 1829, and we're delighted to welcome you all as we celebrate this milestone anniversary. Our first World Accordion Day was held in 2009, marking the 180th birthday of the patent filing. Since then, World Accordion Day has been very successful, generating a lot of positive publicity for the accordion. We've run the event in several ways, from coordinating a series of accordion events throughout the world, to hosting 24-hour live stream broadcasts, to producing live shows featuring our CIA members. This year, we're focusing on the young accordionists of the world. We have a wonderful presentation for you, showcasing a variety of activities from a global cross-section of our CIA membership. Before Grayson introduces the first CIA member's presentation, it's a great honor to welcome the CIA President from Italy, Mecco Paterini. Thank you, Kevin. On behalf of the Confederazione Internazionale des Accordionistes, CIA, it is my great pleasure as a CIA President to welcome you to the World Accordion Day 2021. Since many years, the CIA has taken the 6th of May as the birthday of the accordion, from the date of Cyril Damien's first patent on May 6, 1829. Today, we are all in a very difficult period, and our world of art and music suffers more than many other sectors. But even in this time, we can fortunately stay in touch with artists and accordionists from all over the world, thanks to the tools that technology makes available. There are many events online today, but the CIA World Accordion Day was definitely the first streaming event in the accordion world on May 6, 2009. I would like to thank those who have been working for so many years to keep the interest and quality of the event alive, in particular Arlie Jones, Kevin Friedrich, and our Tyler's Grace Mesfield. Happy birthday, accordion! Thank you, Mirko, for joining us today, your kind words, and offering your welcome to our viewers. As Kevin mentioned, my name is Grayson Macefield, and it is now my pleasure to introduce our World Accordion Day special on children's pedagogy. The Confederation Internationales des Accordionists is most known for hosting the Coupe Mondiale Accordion Competitions, first held in Paris, France, 1938. Over recent decades, we have developed other opportunities to develop the accordion movement, such as the archives, world accordion orchestras, museum alliances, and this World Accordion Day. Each of us on the committees of the CIA and leaders of our association members all began as the young students like we will see today. Our work is to make sure that each of these students are offered the same opportunities we were and we believe that the Coupe Mondiale is one of the best means that allow younger players to be exposed to accordionists striving for perfection, to be able to listen to the full range of genres and repertoires and discover the limitless possibilities of the accordion. The Coupe Mondiale is the birthplace of international artists and is the pinnacle of what program each country's associations have established. The programs created in the past and continuously developed by our international accordion associations are the building blocks that allow players to reach the highest peak what the instrument can do. Today we'll have a glimpse into a few of our associations, how they work, develop and nurture future accordionists, and how they, in turn, will replace us, like our first guest. Alright, it's my turn. Hello, I'm Robbie Chen from Auckland, New Zealand. I'm 11 years old and I've played the accordion since I was 6 years old. 
My two older sisters also play, and both were contestants in the 2019 Coupe Mondiale. The New Zealand Accordion Association was established 50 years ago in order to foster youth, like me, playing the accordion. The main function of the organisation was to have a platform for competitions. First, we begin with nationwide competitions in 1971, then South Pacific competitions in the 1990s, and have hosted the Coupe Mondiale twice in Auckland in 1980 and 2009. We provide opportunities for our young players with masterclasses held by visiting experts for many years, we recruited new students by going into schools and doing a 30-minute show about the accordion, taking one apart and showing them the inside and how it worked, then allowing some students to try some small instruments. This was initially very successful, and most of our current teachers began this way. After a tour to China in 1988, an enterprising teacher began teaching very unstable very young students starting from three to four years old. They learnt to look after and hold their small instruments by using a cardboard replica that did not play. <laughs> First performances were walking onto a stage, bowing to the audience, sitting down, putting their hands in the correct position to play, then standing up, bowing to the audience and leaving the stage. Not a wrong note played, so it was extremely successful, so nothing could go wrong. This program formed many New Zealand champions, the most famous being Grace and Macy. <laughs> Nearly all South Pacific winners were not just soloists. They also played in a group, and most competed against each other on a regular basis. In this photo, four of the players became New Zealand champions, Three went to compete at the Coupe Mondiale, and four were to go on to help host or work at CIA events. Those competing overseas were trained together, further forming bonds that became lifelong. It is interesting to note that many of our 12 and under South Pacific winners went on to become New Zealand, New Zealand champions. My two sisters both won this and continued on to compete internationally. Andre won the 2020 championship and Rachel won the 2019 championship. Here are two clips of what the last two years winners are doing now. underprivileged children globally through music education. With this cooperation with IMC, I really hope to bring positive change and inspire others to do the same. Thank you. This year, I'll be competing in the 11 years and under and hope to do the same. In local areas, performance opportunities were created throughout the year, ensuring that children would perform solo five to six times each year, as well as competing against each other. They also had strong orchestra groups for children, teenagers, and adults, meaning they would perform with these groups another five to six times a year. This has built strong performance programs, creating performers that are strong in all manner of situations. These solo performers were then utilized by the schools they attended. Teachers understood that in encouraging young students to perform regularly in front of an welcoming audience meant the student remained playing. The Accordion Examination Board of New Zealand was formed 47 years ago to establish a graded system of examinations for accordionists. I sat my first examination when I was seven. The success of this organization has meant that most accordion teachers have sat and passed these examinations themselves, and they know the syllabus and repertoire very well. 
so teaching it has become ingrained. Most young students sit an examination every year, providing building blocks not only in playing in pieces but in scales, technical work, oral and sight reading. Nearly all New Zealand champions have sat these examinations and most teachers have convert converted teaching degree or performance degree. New Zealand compositions feature in these examinations with the most popular composer being Gary Deverne with a children's series called Shopping Center Suit for children that have been playing one to three years. The Accordion Examination Board of New Zealand also oversees a scholarship system for those achieving high marks in examinations called the Alan Willi William Jones Memorial Scholarships. These have also been used to help young players attend overseas competitions, cover examination costs, and provide support to pay for lessons. This means that talented accordionists can be given aid if they require it to keep them playing. The huge majority of NZ children playing accordion are immediately put into a group. Those that don't go into a group statistically play for a shorter period, whilst those in, those in a group continue playing for a much longer time, fostering friendships and helping train the younger players. As we are an immigrant country, New Zealand players come from a variety of cultural backgrounds and enjoy playing a diverse range of music. You're a CIA member of the New Zealand Accordion Association, which is all of you a very happy World Accordion Day! Yes! <laughs> That's great, Robbie! Now that I've been able to reclaim my seat back, I'd like to reiterate the fact that so many of today's guests are products of these amazing programs. My next guest actually has a very similar story to me. Both of us winning multiple Coupe Mondiale titles, then taking active roles in the Confederation Internationales des Accordionists. I'd like to welcome the Chairman of the Music Committee, Alexander Selivanov, to speak about children's accordion education in Russia. Dear friends, I would like to say a few words about uh, accordion children education in Russia. We have a huge system of music schools, let's say preliminary music schools, where children study from 7 years old to 15 years old usually. It's a very important step to create a new generation of accordion players. This system still works and covers all the country. We have music schools in every city, town or often in villages. And of course uh, it's very important what teachers we have in that schools. And of course for us very important what accordion teachers we have there. Lucky for us, I can say that uh, we still have uh, really good school teachers and uh, we have uh, fantastic school teachers of different generations. We have teachers who studied in the 1970s or 80s and they still continue to work as a teachers in music schools. And we have uh, also very interesting teachers who just graduated from uh, conservatories in the last uh, 10, 15, 5 years ago. For example, I'm happy that uh, some of uh, my ex-students who just graduated a few years ago already successfully work for children music schools and they have very good results. important that uh, not just because uh, they are young or 
older, but important that our school teachers, they, the best of them, they follow modern repertoire. They give uh, uh, as an important part of education, classical music to their accordion students. So they continue to work using the classical method of education. The same was uh, created for piano or violin or all strings or wind instruments. Also accordionists, they study um, uh, elementary theory of music. They usually often sing in a children's choir. They study solfeggio and they play accordion in solo but also in ensemble and often in orchestra. Uh, we, uh, I can say me and my colleagues, uh, professors of high schools, we all know our best school teachers and we're really thankful them for their work. Uh, we follow, we their results, we listen their uh, ch children, their pupils in uh, children competitions. Sometimes I see we compete for their uh, best pupils to have it in the class of that or this famous conservatory. And uh, I can say that the uh, future of accordion in Russia is in good hands of uh, uh, talented and experienced teachers and uh, good hands of young talented boys and girls and in uh, good hand, hands of uh, parents. I see that also young generation of parents, they really happy uh, to give their children the opportunity to meet and study seriously with the accordion, study music, study culture, national culture and international culture. People in our country know that accordion is the worldwide well-known uh, instrument and uh, in the past uh, it was so popular in uh, Russia that it was included in the list of typical Russian folk instruments but uh, now it's uh, also popular like Russian folk but people know that it's also very international instrument and thanks to that uh, parents and teachers and uh, students, uh, they know that they can collaborate with uh, their foreign colleagues and they can find the friends and can work together thanks to the accordion. So it's very important uh, to say about that in, uh, during the World Accordion Day and uh, this uh, good opportunity to celebrate World Accordion Day and to remind to each other that accordion is one of the tools which help all of us to stay together for friendship, for our best future and uh, to be friends. I congratulate all of us. Thank you for your uh, time for accordion. I think it's best way if you listen accordion or you practice accordion. If you practice musical instrument. You cannot be a uh, not good person because you have no time to do bad things when you're practicing. So please practice accordion and be happy. Happy World Accordion Day! As we've mentioned, on the 6th of May 1829, 192 years ago, a patent was filed in Vienna for the accordion. What followed was a path of innovation, development, experimentation and expansion, each a piece in the jigsaw puzzle of the accordion's history. Throughout the evolution of the accordion, one has seen uncountable variations in shape, size and keyboard configuration. It's very fitting that our next feature project, developed to assist and inspire the next generation of young accordionists, comes from what turned out to be the accordion manufacturing centre of the world, Castrofilado, Italy. AMA, the Association of Accordion Factories and Suppliers, 
was formed approximately 10 years ago. The unified goal among the participating factories and suppliers from Castle Fidardo is to continually work together to help advance the accordion movement. For this particular project, the president of the association and well-known accordion identity, Massimo Pagini, will introduce the exciting work of how AMA members have donated 26 accordions under the unified Castelfidardo name to the Civic Music School, Paolo Soprani in Castelfidardo, affording the young students the opportunity to perform with high quality instruments. Welcome in Castelfidardo for the World Accordion Day 2021. We are very happy and uh, proud to be here to show and to explain about uh, a new project that we started here in Castelfidardo. As you know, in Castelfidardo they are the 90% of the accordion factories, of uh, the high quality accordion factories in the world. And uh, we have uh, since uh, some year a very inter interesting and very uh, good uh, association where they are all the accordion factories, almost all the accordion factories, and uh, our suppliers. In Castelfidardo, this uh, accordion association has um, over 40 members, and uh, the president of this association now is uh, Massimo Pigini from the Virginia Accordion Factory. This accordion is called the AMMA and is uh, operating uh, in uh, cooperation with the institutions, with the regional market and with the schools uh, of uh, local area. I want to introduce you, the president of the association, Massimo Piccini. Thank you for this invitation from the CIA. It is a pleasure to be here in the uh, Accordion World Day and uh, to explain something about this AMMA. AMMA is uh, uh, the association of accordion factory and the supplier of accordion factory here in Castelfidardo. It is uh, an association that is alive from uh, almost 10 years and uh, is devoted to uh, help the uh, accordion world to develop. So we take care to build a new worker with their care to help the institution to have accordion. For example, we donated to the school of Castelfidardo, to the Civica Scuola Soprani and to other two institution, institution in Castelfidardo, 26 accordion. 26 accordion of high quality, the quality of Castelfidardo. So now I will introduce you to Moreno Gerardazio, that is the president of this series school of Castelfidardo Paolo Sopra. Welcome to the Auditorium Vinci of the Civica School of Music Paolo Soprani. We are very proud to receive these accordions for an important project. We work together with other schools. Sant'Anna of Castelfidardo and uh, Mazzini of Castelfidardo. And we have to thanks uh, to AMA and the President Massimo Vigini and CIA uh, Mirko Patarini. Our musical project uh, uh, learns about uh, more than 400 students and uh, only for the accordions we have uh, two and a half hundreds uh, of pupils of every age. Uh, let, me to, let me introduce to you the, our teachers, Roberto Lucanero for uh, diatonic accordion, Luigino Pallotta for classical accordion, Antonino De Luca for jazz accordion, and our artistic director, Emiliano Giaccaglia. We are very proud to, to present 
our teachers, our students and uh, these uh, the magical instruments for uh, the day of accordion, happy birthday. This collaboration shows an amazing unity amongst businesses, which on one hand compete for customers in various markets, but also jointly recognize the importance of supporting the industry as a whole. Our congratulations to AMA members under the leadership of Massimo Pagini for their vision and generous support to this important and very worthwhile project. You may have noticed that there were many different types of accordions being donated to these schools. It's very important to consider the nature and history of the accordion as such a new instrument. Since its patent in 1829, it's changed an incredible amount in nearly every possible manner, meaning that pedagogies and methods have had to constantly change and be adapted 
to keep up with the capabilities unique to a polyphonic, free read, aerophonic instrument. To continue on this topic of pedagogy, we now head to France, where we are delighted to visit the renowned school of the cinema under the direction of master teachers founder Jacques Monet and cinema director Nathalie Boucher. With his 40 years experience in playing and teaching accordion, Jacques Monet has developed a method inspired by wind instruments. His method emphasizes the importance of the air column generated by the bellows, the various music articulations, as well as the importance of musicality. Jacques and Natalie will now take us on a tour of their school to give us a preview of how they are working with the future generation of accordionists. The Cinema is an accordion school based in the heart of France. My name is Jacques Mornay. I am the founder of the Cinema. Hello, my name is Nathalie Bouchex. I am the director of the Cinema. Enseigner aux tout jeunes est un plaisir évident. On leur apprend surtout à faire avant tout de la musique, donner de la vie aux notes, donner un sens à la phrase musicale, c'est essentiel pour la bonne formation. Alors voici un peu les points essentiels sur lesquels on insiste. D'abord une bonne tenue de l'instrument, une utilisation du soufflet en éventail qui donne une bonne compression sur le retour du soufflet. Ensuite travailler euh, les articulations de base qui sont nécessaires, qu'on appelle le legato, le staccato, le legato aspiré, le staccato aspiré, etc. Enfin ce sont des principes qui leur permettront d'acquérir un, un très joli touché qui mettra en évidence le texte musical qu'il travaille. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup dans la main gauche de syncope. Ça fait P, D, B, un P, B, D, B, que la main gauche. C'est le K96, c'est sur la chasse. Cette méthode est idéale pour les jeunes enfants. Elle est basée avant tout sur l'écoute, le ressenti. L'acquisition d'un bon équilibre général sur l'instrument, l'utilisation de la gestuelle corporelle et de la colonne d'air leur permet d'obtenir et de développer très rapidement un jeu musical sensible et technique. Le côté affectif est très important pour nous. Il faut que les jeunes, les tout jeunes, baignent dans une ambiance Familial. Nous avons accompagné de nombreux enfants dès le plus jeune âge pour les amener au plus haut niveau. Les plus talentueux participent aux grands concours internationaux. Ces dernières années, nous avons développé l'enseignement à distance par Skype. Je suis par exemple chaque semaine une toute jeune élève, Ekshig, qui a débuté par Skype à l'âge de 4 ans, elle a maintenant 5 ans, et qui habite en Mongolie. Les résultats sont surprenants. Depuis de nombreuses années, nous avons la chance de collaborer entre autres avec deux grands compositeurs, devenus nos amis et compositeurs fétiches, Claude Thomas et Franck Angélis. 
Franck Angelis vient d'écrire de superbes pièces pédagogiques très ludiques qui permettent aux élèves d'aborder guère plus de deux difficultés en parallèle pour une progression rapide et efficace. It is absolutely necessary to start on the right foot. It will allow the student to save a lot of time later on. There is no age to find your true musical voice. Transmettre l'amour, la passion, le plaisir, la beauté de la musique, c'est quelque chose d'essentiel. Il faut que les jeunes sentent que vous êtes convaincus et que vous êtes passionnés vous-même. The results from the cinema school speak for themselves. Many of their students have won numerous international competitions in both classical and virtuoso entertainment music, and have also gone on to make successful careers in music. It is rewarding to see that at this fine example of a learning establishment, many of the teachers and guest instructors are themselves former cinema students who have returned to share their knowledge with the next generation of accordionists. From France, we now head to Scandinavia. Finland has a long-standing tradition of accordion excellence, spanning traditional folk music to classical accordion music, found all throughout Finland, from small centres through to the famed Sibelius Academy in Helsinki. In addition, many of the most renowned Finnish composers have written or been commissioned to compose a variety of major works for accordion solo, chamber music, and concertos with symphony orchestra. For our next presentation, Jano Aramo, the principal from the Perkema Music Institute in Tampere, welcomes us to this collaborative venture among fellow music schools. A CIA General Secretary, Kimo Matila, will introduce the video and explain the background to these young students' performances that you will hear. Hello, dear accordion friends and best regards from Finland for the World Accordion Day celebration. It's my pleasure to introduce you this video you will see soon. Uh, in Finland, the big national and annual competition was cancelled in April, and then the teachers from three music schools around the country, from west and south and east, Tampere, Espo and uh, Lappenranta, they decided to do something together. Uh, they asked all their students to make a short video and uh, very soon, during one week, the teachers received videos from 79 young players in four categories of age. And then uh, the children and teachers, uh, they had a meeting in Zoom together, each category one by one. They listened the videos together, uh, children and uh, teachers, and every single player got feedback from teachers immediately. Um, the important point of this event for the children was uh, to increase the motivation, uh, to listen other players and meet friends, uh, and uh, to have an aim and a reason to practice and uh, to get uh, thank you feedback Im immediately. And uh, of course the point for the teachers was uh, to, to have a meaningful teaching period for students uh, and uh, to communicate closely with colleagues and friends. Uh, instead of working alone uh, the teachers Teja, Elina, Virve, Seppo and Päivi and uh, the technical master Otto, they created something special together. Uh, the final experience was really great and like the bonus, the children met online also big accordion stars like Maria Kalaniemi, Janne Valkeajoki and Veli Kujala from the Sibelius Academy. And finally, it was like a big musical get-together party, where everybody was happy to take part. Uh, this six-minute video is only a short flash of what happened 
uh, during the weekend. But I think that uh, you will see the feeling quite well. Thank you and enjoy the music. Welcome to the Accordion Video Studio. My name is Jouni Auramo and I'm the principal of Pirkama Music Institute in Tampere. I would also like to introduce our accordion teacher Teija Parviainen and editor of this video Otto Toivonen. It's a great honor for us to be part of this event. We hope you enjoy your time with us on this World Accordion Day. Thank you and all the best. Bye bye. I am Elina Leskela and I am teaching accordion in Espoo Music Institute. Olen Virve Jääskeläinen, opetan harmonikan soittoa Lappeenrannan musiikkiopistossa. Hei! Minä olen Päivi Valkeajoki. Ja minä olen Seppo Valkeajoki. Me molemmat opetamme harmonikan soittoa Lappeenrannan musiikkiopistossa. Hei hei! hei, hei.
It's wonderful to see this example of how teachers and schools reacted to this global situation and moved quickly to provide new programs and platforms with interactive activities to engage and motivate young players. While there is a great deal of importance on the high end results of playing, artistry and performance, the many formative years of teaching and learning involves many components, which always requires a great investment of finances, time and effort from everyone involved, including the student, teachers, family and the community. As you've all come to know, technology has now become an integral part of our daily lives. Over the last year in particular, it has allowed interaction that would not have been possible otherwise. While online video programs, such as Zoom, have played an increasingly bigger part of our lives, there have been other significant developments in technology to assist in the teaching and learning of, in our case, the accordion. For the next part of our World Accordion Day show, we're going to visit our CIA member, the Harmonica Verband Österreich, the Austrian Accordion Association. Their board member, Johannes Merzner, will share with us some exciting details about a newly developed app, Scoreflows, which aims to motivate and help students. We'll now turn it over to Johannes, who will show us the various features of this exciting pedagogy aid and how it all works. Hello, friends of the accordion all over the world. My name is Johannes Münzner, and I am a member of the board of the Harmonica Verband, the HVO, the Austrian Accordion Society. On the occasion of the World Accordion Day 2021, I would like to present to you a brand new app for students, the Score Flows Player. In the following moments, I'll take you through the app and show you what its benefits are. Some terms are just in German, but I'll try my best to translate it so you can get a short impression what this app is all about. Enjoy this ride through this e-learning program. This is the very first page when you open this Core Flows player. In the top menu, you can choose your instrument. For example, accordion or bassoon, or piano, or organ, also percussion, flute, as you want. So we choose the accordion and the next step is to choose the title you want to play. In the lower menu, you can choose now a song you want to play. All the pieces that you can choose here are in the very new accordion school the accordion universe. Now we choose the first one, Mary had a little lamb. The next page shows you a menu where you can choose the tempo, you can choose a transposition and you also can choose the tuning, whether you want to play on 440, 443, 445 or even in the older tunings 430, 420, 415. So many accordions are tuned in 440, so we choose 440. You can also decide whether you want more reverb or less reverb. In German it's called Hall and here you can do the settings. When you finish that, just press the button load. Now we come to the most interesting part, the playback. Every instrument you see here in this list is recorded by a professional musician. So you can choose the flute. The flute is playing the theme. You can choose a voice. The voice sings the theme and then you have the possibility to choose first accordion, right hand, left hand, second accordion, right hand, left hand. You can also activate the click 
and you can activate the count in. So now let's hear what it sounds like. At first, when you just want to hear what the arrangement sounds like, activate every instrument and then press the button play. Now the special thing is that you can deactivate the voices you are playing. For example, you are playing the right hand of the first accordion, just deactivate the first accordion and then it sounds like this. So in this stadium we just have the accompaniment. If you want to play, to practice just the left hand of the first accordion, activate the first accordion right hand, deactivate the first accordion left hand, and then it sounds like this. If you can play the piece well, you can deactivate, of course, the click, so it sounds more, much more better. The last thing I want to show you is that you can adjust the volume of each voice. Just listen to it. Just the first accord in right hand and here you can pull the volume down. So if you just need a little help for your right hand and maybe second accord is playing. You can adjust the volume of the right hand of the first accord. That's the big flexibility you have with this app, Score Follows Player. To sum it up, accordionists, and as you could see, other instruments are included in this app too, have the opportunity to practice new songs in a way they want to. The possibilities of adjusting the tuning, the tempo, and what instruments are accompanying are endless. This app can increase the motivation of practicing. Very few students have the chance of playing together with a partner or even other instruments more than once a week in the accordion lesson. But with this core flows player, this situation is over now. The app will be constantly fed with new titles and additional keys, so there is no point of getting bored. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation and keep on playing the accordion. Have a nice World Accordion Day and greetings from Austria. Bye. We'd like to thank Johannes and HVO for their video and app project. It's great to see this collaborative app for multiple instruments as an educational tool for learning new material in such an easy manner. It's fantastic that all the playback recordings are made by real musicians and that the app can accommodate changes of individual volumes, tempo and tuning for each part. These numerous variables allow the player to 
play the piece alone while focusing on individual hands, but also teach him to be both the soloist with a group accompaniment or an accompanist to back another player or singer. Next in our show, we're heading to the United States of America. The Accordionists and Teachers Guild International, the ATG, was founded more than 80 years ago and has worked tirelessly ever since on behalf of the accordion. The ATG strives to promote and create visibility for the accordion in its many forms and to develop and grow subsequent generations of aspiring accordionists to ensure its sustainability into the future. For this segment, we join the ATG president, Mary Ann Cavoum, as she introduces just a small sampling of the organization's recent activities through both their locally sponsored and outreach programs. Hello, from the United States. I'm Mary Ann Cavoum, president of the Accordionists and Teachers Guild International, and I'm delighted to participate in this celebration of World Accordion Day. I'm happy to tell you that the ATG has been very busy over the last year with many different programs, several of which are focused on the development of young players. One of our most exciting events was an outreach program in collaboration with the University of Illinois in Chicago, where the ATG presented a two-hour virtual class entitled The Science of Sound. This was a bonus class offered in the university's STEM program, which is designed to educate underserved high school students from the inner city. During our two hours, some of our members demonstrated how a piano, cello, and flute created sound and discussed the mechanics of how those instruments create sound through vibration. Then Frank Busso of Ernest Defner, the United States Titano dealer, took apart an accordion and showed the students the inside of the accordion discussing how the various reeds vibrate and how the different sizes produce different pitches. Here, by the way, this is, it's called a reed block. This is what you have inside an acoustic accordion. Um, on the bottom, you see these, these openings here, it's sort of like a bunch of harmonicas mounted inside your accordion. Now, we don't blow into these reeds with, with our mouth. Uh, instead, we'll, we'll have the air uh, circulating because of the bellows, the part of the accordion that goes in and out. And we'll, we'll see those a little bit later. I'm going to show you here. This is an accordion that's actually cut in half, so you can kind of see the, the cross section of it here. The piano keys, okay, when I when I hit one of these keys, it's going to open the valve, and that's how we get the air to flow into the precise reeds, to, so do we get the, the exact sound that we're looking for, okay? The students were very, very interested in this. Frank Busso also generously provided nine 12 bass accordions for these high school students to have an opportunity to actually create sound on the accordion. They were shipped to the university, and distributed to the students who were interested in, in trying it out. So the final portion of our two hour class was a little lesson taught by Joanne Cochran Summers. She virtually taught these students a little bit of how to put on the instrument and begin to try to play. As a result, four of them expressed interest in learning the accordion and Frank has been kind enough to allow them to continue to use these instruments. And we are soon setting up a class for them that Gail Campanella of the ATG and I will teach virtually. So we'll see what this develops. In the meantime, let's take a quick look at Joanne Summers' introduction to the accordion to these students. Hi, everyone. This is something I really like to do, is to give first lessons on the accordion. I've given a lot of them because during my time of teaching uh, accordion majors at the university, we had a music therapy program and a lot of music therapists came through the university and they all had to learn to play the accordion. Good, good. That was beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now I'd like for you to try this. All by yourself. Can you do that? Two times, mm -hmm. out, two times out by yourself. 
try. Now that you've seen our little science of sound project, I'll tell you about some other things that are going on. We also sponsored our first virtual recital for our teachers in the ATG. This occurred in March and gave an opportunity for all of our teachers to present their students if they so choose. Well, it was very well received and very well attended. We had nine teachers presenting 18 students at various ages and levels. What a great way for the ATG to encourage their teachers to support each other and to support their students and for all of us to learn what's going on throughout our country because we do have a very diverse country. So I think now you're gonna look at just a couple of little segments from that recital. Enjoy. <laughs> Finally, I have exciting news to share with you from our ATG Syllabus Committee, chaired by Joanne Cochran Summers. The committee, which includes Beverly Fess from Canada, Joanna Darrow from New Jersey, and Amy Jo Sawyer from Illinois, is creating a new syllabus that will include a preparatory level and eight levels beyond that. They have been working diligently since September on this. Not sure when it will be released because it is a colossal project. I know they hold meetings almost weekly. In addition to including repertoire that already exists, the committee has been soliciting new compositions from our own members, Joseph Natoli and Amy Jo Sawyer. I'm told that at least 20 new compositions will appear in this syllabus for both free bass and stradella. Once this syllabus is completed, the ATG hopes to offer testing at each level so that students are able to document their achievements and teachers can better gauge the progress of their students. Teachers will be able to rely upon this syllabus as a steady guide for progress. Ultimately, the ATG hopes to develop a method of virtual testing. That is a work in process as one must figure out how to make it fair and how to make it truly be a true test when it's taken virtually. So that is the exciting news from ATG. That's what's happening in the United States on our end. On behalf of the entire membership of ATG, I would like to thank Grayson and Kevin for putting together this beautiful World Accordion Day program. And I wish all of you a musical and happy World Accordion Day. We can see that even during a period of time with limited in-person gatherings, that the ATG has been busy reaching out to both current accordionists and prospective students. It's really fantastic to see Joanne Cochran Summers, the acclaimed University of Missouri, Kansas City professor, a career teacher of some of the world's finest accordionists, equally as passionate about introducing the accordion to someone for the very first time, as shown in the Science of Sound Outreach program. The ATG plans to celebrate its 80th anniversary in Chicago next year, and we look forward to hearing details about the event as they become available. For our next presentation, we are happy to pay a visit to our friends in Estonia. The Estonian Accordion Society has been very active over recent times and have done their best to adapt to the ever-changing environment that the world faces. Today, we are pleased to welcome Mick Langaton, Vice President of the Association to share with us some of the activities that took place to keep the young students both inspired and motivated. Hello and happy World Accordion Day from Tallinn. My name is Mick Langebron and I'm currently the Vice President of the Estonian 
accordion society. And this time I would like to speak about the role of our association in helping accordion teachers in these difficult times. Regardless of the restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic all over the world, there have been many interesting new directions in accordion teaching, of teachers' education and competitions. Uh, in February, the Accordion uh, uh, Society held the first online uh, workshop with a focus on accordion pedagogy. Uh, in the first part, Deed Kaluste presented uh, a pedagogical repertoire for young pupils, which was brand new, and talked about how to accompany very little children on piano and as well as on the accordion. The new collection uh, includes uh, 12 easy accordion pieces with both accordion and piano accompaniments. This uh, gives the opportunity to players with very different levels to play uh, together both with uh, the teacher as well as in chamber music with, for example, a piano student. Uh, currently, in our country, playing in bigger ensemble groups is not allowed, so this book can be quite useful to prevent ensemble playing becoming extinct. The second part of the workshop was uh, a lecture from Momir Novakovic about uh, teaching virtuosity to young players the lecture was focused on how-to methodics, but contained all the essential premises and theoretical pre-knowledge on the subject. Uh, the main uh, objective uh, of the subject was to share uh, information and experience uh, in the field uh, of students' uh, technical development uh, the focus was on articulation, in particular uh, crystal, uh, bright legera uh, and step-by-step -step, uh, process of achieving it. In the end of the workshop there was also an uh, online concert by Tallinn Accordion Trio, which includes uh, accordionists from younger generation in Tallinn. Um, Momir Novakovic, uh, Henry Zibo and me, Mik Langebron. And the program included transcriptions as well as original works for accordion. And at the moment, uh, Estonian Accordion Society is organizing the uh, third online competition, Estonian uh, Accordion Stars for young uh, accordion pupils across Estonia. The competition is held every two years and is divided into categories by classes in music schools. Every student can uh, perform uh, two pieces with different characters of their own choice. And this activity helps to, uh, to easily gather jury members from abo abroad and pupils can get various feedback afterwards for their playing. This year there is a record number of participants, 85, which is very much for Estonia. And uh, 29 different schools and uh, 33 different teachers are involved in this uh, uh, competition this time. And this summer Estonian Accordion Society is also organizing two summer camps in Võru and in Tihnu for young players to participate in ensemble uh, playing and uh, or orchestra. After isolation and individual practicing, this will surely increase the joy of accordion playing and give a nice overview to young pupils uh, of what other players are doing. If the, I have also been uh, in these uh, accordion camps uh, myself as well as child and for me they were always the highlight uh, of the summer. 
there is also a lot of uh, social activities in the evenings and it makes accordion playing uh, cooler if there are nice people uh, around you. And as you can see, I like this camp so much that I have become one of the conductors at the camp organized in Kihno by our association's uh, president Christel Laas. And finally, Estonian uh, Accordion Society will commission 14 new pieces this year for music school students, which uh, uh, are composed by people who have experience with accordions. And in ad addition, we are also waiting for eight new orchestra arrangement as well. Thank you and hopefully see you soon. Congratulations to the Estonian Accordion Society for their work. We saw earlier in the Austrian segment that they had developed an app that could enable the student the possibility to play to an accompaniment. And here in Estonia, it's interesting to note that they've worked to accomplish the same important educational tool, but using arrangements created to be played either on the piano or the accordion live. We look forward to the new compositions and arrangements as they become available. And in the meantime, we wish all the participants in the upcoming summer camps a wonderful time as they're reunited in person while enjoying both the accordion and their friends. As we continue our World Accordion Day show, we now visit our friends in China, where they have just concluded the third Shanghai Spring Accordion Festival. Long recognized for supporting accordionists of all ages, in particular, we are always pleased to see the incredibly large number of young students actively involved in learning and playing the accordion. We are very pleased to welcome the President of the Chinese Accordion Association, Professor Li Tong, and President of the Shanghai Accordion Association, Crystal Wang, to our show, as they present an overview of the recent festivals, as well as other activities.尊敬的各位CIA的朋友们,大家好。在这里,请允许我代表中国音协手风琴学会热烈祝贺2021年国际手风琴日的到来。每一年举办的国际手风琴日,它见证着国际手风琴的发展,也见证了各个国家的手风
Hello, my dear friends. This is Crystal Wang from China. It is another year of World Accordion Day, the Festival of Accordion. As you know, Accordion is 200 years old this year. So it is my honor to have held the great activity again, Shanghai Spring International Accordion Culture and Art Festival, dedicated to the World Accordion Day. On May the 1st, 2021 Shanghai Spring International Accordion Culture and Art Festival formally opened in Shanghai Changning New Town Central Park. We cooperated with the government. More than 100 accordion teams from China participated in the online performance before and the excellent teams are selected from them to bring performance in the form of flash shows and stage performance, creating an immersive experience of Accordion Park. The popularization of accordion education in Shanghai has developed very well. Now, there are nearly 100 accordion teams has been set up in the majority of primary and secondary schools and children's palaces of Shanghai. Also, there were series of wonderful activities such as performance, art salon, exhibition, new book launch forum, concert, and market were held to development the culture of Shanghai, arousing a fantastic atmosphere of accordion culture. During the special concert of accordion in the evening, accordion has been integrated with folk music, Shanghai opera, and other art forms. And we also invited the accordionists from Serbia, Petmaric, and Alexander Nikolic who has been here two years before. Via short videos and live cooperation, they played the folk music of their own country and then cooperated with the kid, learning accordion in Shanghai, who has been at the scene of the concert, giving the live performance of the folk song Jasmine Flower bring in double enjoyment of hearing and vision to the audience. I believe that with the success of this event, the popularization and development of accordion will be improved in China so as to provide professional power for the specialization of accordion. Thanks for your listening. Bye-bye. What a wonderful way to celebrate World Accordion Day, the gathering of all the accordionists for the third Shanghai Spring International Accordion Festival. I'm sure having everyone listening to and participating in live music again brought a real sense of happiness and hope for a wonderful year ahead. Professor Lee was kind enough to offer his thanks for all the support the CIA has offered over the years, but we in turn must offer our thanks to Professor Lee Crystal Wang and the entire team in China for all they do, not only in promoting the accordion on a national level, but for encouraging global events such as hosting our Coupe Mondiale competitions and other major international gatherings. We look forward to visiting China again very soon and resuming this wonderful collaboration. For our next segment, we're going to take a trip to Brazil. Renato Borghetti started playing the eight bass diatonic accordion when he was 13. At that time, there were 20 or 30 accordion factories throughout Brazil. As time went on, these factories ceased production or transitioned into producing other goods. Renato, however, wanted to provide kids an opportunity to play the accordion, just as he had, and thus his project was born. Learning how to manufacture the same eight bass diatonic instruments from scratch, the Fabrica de Gateros became his life's project. He feels very happy that the young students themselves will now go on to teach the accordion and pass on the tradition. We invite you to enjoy this fascinating glimpse into Renato's work and the positive influence he has had on the popularity of the accordion among young students in Brazil. Thank you. 
eu toco gaita desde os 13 anos de idade e comecei numa gaitinha de oito baixos como essa que a gente fabrica na fábrica de gaiteiros. A ideia da fábrica de gaiteiros surgiu da necessidade que eu percebi, primeiro, do acesso ao instrumento. Chegamos a ter 20, quase 30 fábricas de, de, de acordeão no Brasil e a, a maioria no Rio Grande do Sul, mas, num determinado momento, todas elas ou faliram, desativaram ou passaram a produzir outro tipo de, de produto, né? Então, é exatamente a ideia. Fabricar um instrumento é, para o jovem, para a criança começar a tocar. A gente precisou aprender a fabricar o instrumento. Isso a gente tem, tem sempre também que agradecer ao nosso mestre Tadeu, que nos ensinou, ensinou o Rogério, que é o nosso mestre aqui agora da fábrica de gaiteiros. A madeira que é usada agora na parte de fora da gaita é um eucalipto beneficiado. Ele vem do sul da Bahia e ele tem um tratamento térmico, por isso que ele tem essa qualidade superior. Isso vai se transformar a parte externa da gaita, a carcaça da gaita. Aqui na marcenaria também são feitas as partes internas, como você pode ver, são os cachilhos, onde é presa as paletas que emitem o som. Eu comecei como aluno, fiz aula durante dois anos e hoje eu faço sólidos das gaitas. Então, encerrado o processo de afinação, a gaita já está pronta para tocar. Hoje, a fábrica de gaiteiros tem oito, oito escolas em sete cidades e atendemos mais de 200 crianças, jovens, adolescentes que gostam dessa gaitinha ponta. De hora em hora, nós temos oito crianças tocando e aprendendo a gaita ponta. Agora a gente está na sede da fábrica de gaiteiros, Barra do Ribeiro, com o professor Eduardo Vargas. Temos aí uma parte da turma da gurizada aqui da Barra, né, para tocar uma vaneira. Vamos, vamos, vamos lá, moçada. tocando, daí eu pensei, pá, ah, onde é que é essa fábrica? Eu tenho que entrar nela, né? <risos> Fui aí que começou. Eu me sinto muito feliz tocando. É uma coisa que eu penso seriamente em fazer quando eu crescer. Eu vou seguir a carreira na Caíta. na escola a pioneira né a, a que começou a sementinha é, na cidade de Guaíba eu acredito que hoje eu encontrei a minha missão aqui neste mundo que é passar adiante a cultura da gaita ponto de oito baixo trabalho com a música Uh, realizo shows, gravações, a gaita é meu instrumento de trabalho. A fábrica de gaiteiros atende é, jovens de 7 a 15 anos. Mas claro que nós temos a nossa exceção, nós temos um, um mascote em Porto Alegre, que é o querido Seu João. Na minha idade, 62 anos, né, e eu estou participando com muito orgulho, não pretendo parar mais. A gente construiu um método, né, que é o a base da tablatura e também tem a partitura, né? Isso facilita um monte, porque o aluno começa a ter material para levar para casa e tem material para estudar. O 
É uma alegria, né? Para mais de um ano e pouco já que eu estou aqui fazendo esse trabalho com a gurizada. Nós temos um retrato das periferias, como aqui na Lomba, em muitas periferias, de muita violência. A fábrica de gaiteiros tem sido um referencial extraordinário e muito positivo. Tô gostando de ver a gurizada coesa aí, tocando, parceirado. A gente está muito feliz aqui com a tua visita né, e fazer parte da fábrica de gaiteiros. A música mostra a alma da gente e dividir isso com meu tio e com meu pai é muito bom. A gaita significa para mim um, um melhor amigo, um irmão, um melhor amigo. No futuro eu quero seguir a profissão sempre com a minha gaita, realizar meu, mais ainda meu sonho e, se possível, dar aula aqui na fábrica. Chegando a rancheira do Gabriel. Moçada, tá, tá demais. Tá? Parabéns, professor. Parabéns, Dudu. Muito bonito. Parabéns, São Gabriel. <risos> Um aplauso chegando o nosso idealizador desse projeto, Renato Borghetti. Uma salva de palmas, pessoal. Hoje eu vim principalmente para escutar, escutar o que essa meninada está tá fazendo. Tu és o um expoente desse instrumento no mundo inteiro. Então, na minha concepção, o melhor músico de Gaita Ponto que eu já vi tocar. Muito obrigado da minha parte e da parte das crianças. A fábrica de gaiteiros é, é, é o meu projeto de vida, sem dúvida alguma. Eu acho que tem muita gurizada que, que vai seguir tocando, muita gurizada que vai aprender, muita gurizada que vai ensinar. E, então é, é, um, é um projeto que eu me orgulho muito e, e eu tenho certeza que no futuro também o Rio Grande do Sul, o Brasil, vai se orgulhar dessa meninada aí é, tocando a gaita ponto, tocando a gaita de oito baixos. That was a heartwarming look at how one man's passion for the accordion has taken him on a lifelong journey to provide the next generation with the same opportunities he himself was afforded as a youngster. The joy it brings to all involved, including the students, 
the families, and those listening to the music, means he will leave a lasting legacy, one that will be passed on for generations to come. On behalf of the Confederación Internacional des Accordionistes, thank you all for joining us for World Accordion Day 2021. A big thank you to our member associations for taking the time to share this sampling of what is happening in regards to both the support of young students and the educational opportunities in your respective countries. We thank the teachers for their work in inspiring the youth of today to continue with their musical education and to the families who make those opportunities possible. We congratulate all the young students and know they will have a lifetime of enjoyment from the accordion just as we have. Before Grayson closes the show, we would like to welcome our CIA General Secretary, Kimo Matila from Finland, to say a few words. Thank you everyone for joining us, and I'll now hand it over to Kimo, and then to Grayson to close the show. Happy birthday for Cyril Demian's accordion and his patent. Thanks to his invention, we have our wonderful instrument since 200 years almost. Thank you for providing videos and information for this online show. I hope to meet you soon uh, in the next CIA event, which will be the Coup Mondiale competition in October in Munich. See you then in Germany. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Kimo for serenading us for the end of the show. It's very clear from the reoccurring themes from each association that we are in tremendously safe hands for the future generations. New accordionists will have all the opportunities we've had and will benefit from the incredible work the associations are doing, providing instruments, creating new teaching methods, commissioning compositions, and providing a place for them to gather and share their experiences and passions. I'd like to thank the CIA, its President Mirko Paterini, General Secretary Kima Matilla for their support, and also Harley Jones for the initiative to create World Accordion Day. And of course, a big thank you to my co-host, CIA Ambassador Kevin Frederick. Please feel free to share your events, concerts, performances, and post on this Facebook page. It was created specifically for you. Thank you for watching and happy World Accordion Day.